الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك ممن تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير تولد الليل في النهار وتولد النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب صدق الله العظيم The first two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah we will be dealing with today is Al-Mu'izzu Al-Muzillu subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Mu'izz the one that gives honor and respect and Al-Muzill the one who dishonors and simply means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mu'iz al-mudhil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has full control over honoring or dishonoring anyone. Honor, respect is something that everyone loves to have. Who in this world does not like to be honored? Who would say that I really would like to be dishonored by people? Everyone likes the owner and likes to have respect amongst people. But yet we see not hundreds, not thousands, millions of people who dishonor themselves. It's not that others are dishonoring them, they dishonor themselves. If we look at it, all of these people, they really would love to be honored. So why are they dishonoring themselves? Because they look for it in a wrong place. They would like to earn some honor and respect, dignity, but they are going to a wrong market. They are going, they are shopping for it in a wrong store. And thus, they end up buying totally wrong items. Instead of getting honor and respect, they end up dishonoring themselves. Maybe a very simple example, and it is at the same time a true one. When a criminal, a person who had committed crime, was caught and asked for the reason why would he commit such a crime? And the response was, so that my name will be published in the newspaper. So he would like to see his name over there. Simply means it's a feeling of having some role honor and respect. But he's buying it in a totally wrong way. He's going to the wrong place. Maybe worse than that, a person who commits a suicide, leaving a note behind that because he would like to make the main headlines and his name would uh, so that his name would appear in the main headlines in news. So people are even giving their lives for it, but totally with the wrong understanding of it and trying to get it from a wrong place. So when we see that millions of people in the world are dishonored and they are doing things where they are really humiliating themselves, they are putting themselves down, they are dishonoring themselves, it's just because these people don't know where to get this honor from. And they are always shopping for it at a wrong store and they never find it. If they are told where to find it, if we can direct them to the right store, 
if we can tell them where they can get all of this from, then would really love to have it. And the only place where we can get that from is in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowhere besides the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person can earn any honor and respect. And as I said, there's some questions maybe raised in our minds that still we see some other people who have a lot of respect. Inshallah we'll talk about it a later to understand that concept of what is honor. But at this time, we need to keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give anyone any power in this world over buying honor from anywhere or from getting dishonored or dishonoring someone in any way besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a full control of it himself. He has kept the full control of it. He never gave anyone that control. And therefore, if a person is really looking for it, then that's the only place. Turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person will go anywhere else and will try to find it in any other store in the world, we will not be able to find it. If the whole world will get together and do their best to dishonor someone, and that is the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have decided to honor him, the same method that they would use for dishonoring him will turn the reason for his honor and respect. Vice versa, if a person by his actions deserves to be dishonored and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have decided according to his actions this is what he deserves, if all of us will get together and would like to honor that person, we will not be able to give him the honor. And who knows, the very same method we would use for honoring the person will turn out the reason for his own dishonor and will put him down. That's by the very same action that we have done for him to raise him up, he may fall just through the same uh, through the very same action. And we see that. There are a lot of examples of it. When a lot of effort is being put for someone to have a high position and have, have a lot of respect. And the very same position turns the reason for that person's dishonor and disrespect. How many times we feel that we would like for our souls to be honored or for someone else to be dishonored. And at different occasions we find in the history with Anbiya and then even after that, people plotting for it. Look, when this person comes in, you start shouting at him, you start cursing at him, accusing him. With all of these types of different methods people would use this to dishonor the person. Sometimes, we see, it always happened in the history of Anbiya alayhi wassalatu wassalam. The very same method turns out the reason for that person's honor and respect. Simple example, and there are, I mean, pick up the life history of any prophet of Allah, and you will see hundreds of these examples in the life of each and every prophet. I just like to choose one at this time, it just, it just came to my mind. A beautiful example where Qarun plotted against Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. And he thought to take away the position of Musa alayhi salatu wassalam, I have to dishonor him in this community. I will buy my honor and I will buy that respect for myself through my wealth. This is what he depended on. And I will get Musa alayhi salatu wassalam dishonored by a plan that he had in mind. 
Now, according to his plan, Musa is giving a talk amongst Bani Israel. A woman gets up. She said, Musa, you talk so much in public, but do you remember what did you do to me last night? What? I don't even know who you are. Now you're telling me you don't know me. How about last night? When we were together? SubhanAllah. And what could be more humiliating situation for, especially for a Prophet of Allah, when he's being accused of something like this? A normal believer, a normal person, I don't know if nowadays that's true, but a normal believer would not want to be in that position of being accused of something like this. And this is a prophet of Allah who's spending a very pure and clean life. And there is a woman standing there in public, she's accusing him that he had committed sin with her when I has been love. After trying to make her take her word back and just say the truth, and she was not willing to because she was getting paid for it. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam now, he uses his position and his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his spiritual power as he says to this woman. Tell me now, who told you to say this? She couldn't control herself anymore. That's it. Now is a prophet of Allah who's using his spiritual power to get the truth out of her and pointing at her that just now tell me the truth. Who told you to say something like this? And she couldn't control her soul but to point towards Qarun who's standing over there that he's the one who plotted against you and he paid me to do this. Now Musa alayhi salatu wasalam turns towards Qarun. And he doesn't talk to Qarun. Not even worth it talking to a person like this. And he says to the earth, Swallow him. And that day to show that how honorable he is, he came with all of his wealth, he's having all of his servants and his workers and everyone around him, and all the treasures lauded on the different on right, showing his position. So he got as much as he could to show people and hear you, because the intention tonight is for him to earn the honor and respect and to dishonor Musa alayhi salatu wasalam wa ayyazu billah. See the cloth that turns all the way the other way, other way around, and Musa alayhi salatu wasalam sees to the earth, swallow him, and he starts sinking down with all of his wealth that he has around him. And he shouts and begs, please Musa, please save me Musa. No, swallow him. Swallow him, and the earth keeps on swallowing Qarun until he disappears. وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُزِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ O Allah, you honor whomever you like, and you dishonor whoever you want. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ Every good is in your control. Inshallah, we'll continue after salah. We were talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-mu'iz, al mudir the one who has full control over honoring or dishonoring someone. Let's look at some of the ayahs of the Quran al Karim that talk about this topic. One of these ayahs I recited earlier, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ تُعْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْجَعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Say Allah, the owner of the kingdom, you give the kingdom to whomever you like, and you take it away from whomever you want. What is the man You honor whoever you like. What is the man You dishonor whoever you want. As we learn from this ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full control over honoring and dishonoring 
at the same time we learn from this ayah another very important point. Do you know what that is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning two things. You give the kingdom to whoever you want and you take it away from whoever you want. And you honor who you want and dishonor who you want. Which means these are totally two different things. Having the kingdom doesn't mean the person has honor. Totally two different things. He gives this to some people, he gives this to some others. And he may give both to one person. So, these are totally two different things. If we think that I will be honored if I get that high position, it's not necessarily that the person will get honored with it. And we see Many times the position really turns out to be a reason for the person being dishonored. So, تُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Allah honors whoever He likes and dishonors whoever He wants. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nisa told us بَشِّرِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Give this news to the munafiqeen. We have to really Pay good attention to the word munafiqeen as he's not talking about kuffar. He's talking about a group from within our souls. It's not a group that is out in the clubs. It's a group within our souls. It could be any person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being of munafiqeen. Bashir al munafiqeen bi anna lahum azab al alima. Give the news to the Munafiqeen that they have a very painful punishment. Who are these people who are getting that news? الَّذِينَ يَتَّخِذُونَ الْكَافِرِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Those who take the kuffar as helpers instead of people of Iman. Those who will make a kafir their wali their helper, their supporter, their friend, instead of a mu'min. أَيَبْتَغُونَ عِنْدَهُمُ الْعِزَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is asking the question. Are they looking for honor from them? Is this is the reason that they are trying to please them and this is the only reason that they are trying to make them their wali? Whatever that wali now will stand, the word wali has many different meanings. And depending on our situation, how we take them, the eye will fill on the person. I have sabuna in the humana in them. Are they looking for honor from them? Allah says, let me tell you, fa inna al-izzata lillahi jami'a, I have full control over izza, over, over honor and respect. It's an ayah that we really have to just repeatedly recite the ayah. And remind our souls of it and look at our situation. Bashir al munafiqeen Tell these munafiqeen that they will have a painful punishment. Those who are taking the munafiq kuffar to be their wali instead of believers. How many times do we find our souls in a position where if I choose that direction, it may be better for me to keep my position than standing with this person who has a beard or who looks like his name will be Muhammad or Abdullah. Let me try to be undercover Muslim. Anyway, we have to keep on reciting this ayah over and over. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yunus says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ أَلَا means listen carefully. أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ totally the opposite of what we were just talking about. أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ those who have Allah as their one, their supporter, their helper, their connections with Allah, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. They will have no fear, neither they will grieve. الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. Who are those? Those who have iman and taqwa. 
لذ الله يقف تقوى هاي لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة they will get a good news in this life as well as in the other لا تبديل لكلمات الله no one can change the words of Allah ذلك هو الفوز العظيم this is the greatest success ولا يحزنك قولهم and their words whatever they accuse you of should never grieve you why? إن العزة لله جميعا honor is totally in the control of Allah هو السميع العليم he is here the knower he knows what they are doing he knows what you are doing ولا يحزنك قولهم let not their words grieve you because إن العزة لله جميعا honor is totally within the control of Allah In this ayah we just read Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لهم البشرة في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة They will have a black tie and good news in this dunya and آخرة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم explains that when a mu'min is about to die no matter what type of life he lives maybe it's life of hardship, difficulties being under stress because of uh, being a mu'min at the time of death he will be shown his place in Jannah before he dies, just at the time of death as he will see the angels of death, he will be shown his place in Jannah. This is Lahum al Bushra. He will have a good news in this dunya. So at the time of leaving dunya, he is very peaceful. SubhanAllah, what can be better than this? That when we are leaving, we leave peacefully. We have no worries. We are happy to leave. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةِ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا Whoever is looking for honor, always remember, Allah has full control over it. In Surah Al-Munafiqoon, talking to the Munafiqeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Honor is blown, it blown to Allah, his messenger from Allah and to the people of Iman. But the Munafiqeen don't know this. They are looking for it at the wrong place. This is what we were talking about. They are looking for it at the wrong place. The honor is totally in the control of Allah and he gives honor to, uh, to his prophet and to the people of Iman, but Munafiqeen don't know this. And this was revealed especially in the position of Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, who was the leader of Munafiqeen. He was always trying to say things against Islam. Read the history. Always trying to make a statement against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To please the other people who are against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? He thought, in this, posi- in this way I will get a better position. He was looking for position. He was looking for respect. He was looking to have some honor, some position in his community. And he thought Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's situation is very weak. Of course, because all the rest of the people, my followers that were there, they believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I said, la ilaha illallah, I said, anna Muhammad and Abdul Rasulullah, but on the other hand, you will always hear statements against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and against Islam from him. The ayah was revealed mainly about his situation. That you put, to please all of yours and to get respect and honor in this world, you are doing all of this, Remember, Allah has full control over it. And then now we see who has that honor and who has respect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Abdullah ibn Ubayn wa sallam. In Surah Al-Mujadra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is a rule now, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْأَذَلِينَ Those who oppose Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will surely be of the dishonored ones. They will surely be dishonored somebody. And, as the hadith indicates, 
if the person's death is coming soon, then he will see, uh, then he will see his akhirah. And if he has long time before he will leave, he may just, he may even see it in the dunya. The situation and the positions change in seconds. It doesn't take a lot, long planning and then working according to those plans for years before things will take place. It's only seconds. And situations change. But even if it's not in this dunya, in the akhirah, humiliation forever. In Allah Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't you see that everything that in the heaven and the earth they do sujood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they bow down before Allah, وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْأَمَرُ Sun, moon, stars, وَالنُّجُومُ وَالشِّجُّ وَالْجِبَالِ Mountains, وَالشَّجَرُ and trees, وَالدَّوَابِ Even animals, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ and a lot of people, وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ and there are many others who are destined to go to عذاب, to the punishment. This is why they refuse to do sujood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, وَمَنْ يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُكْرِمْ If Allah dishonors someone, no one can honor him. What is the connection? People do sujood. Others refuse to do the sujood. Allah says, if I have dishonored the person, no one can honor him. We may now quickly rewind the movie in our mind and see a situation when we may, when we, we ourselves may have been sitting in the back hall. Back hall of the masjid. We had a lunch or we had a dinner. And after that, some of us came to the masjid here because the land was closed. And some of us, some people, decided to leave the masjid without doing the salah. Now, the question comes into the mind that it looks like those people are really very honorable people. They have good, they have a lot of respect. They have a lot of honor in the community. But the eye is saying some refuse to do the sujood and they are dishonored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we understand this now? And this will solve that question also that may be coming to the mind. Then we see a lot of people who really hold a good position. They are really, they hold a lot of, they have a lot of honor. Maybe for some of our young people, when they would start comparing it, they would say, look, if my father or our scholars or even our muftis or just great people, when our imam, if they go to a place they may not have the honor and respect as much as an actress may have, if she would be at that place. And here we are saying that Allah has full control of it, and there is all belongs to Allah and, people, and the prophets and the people of Iman. It's only because we have forgot the real understanding. We have forgot what is honor, what is respect. Or the understanding of it has changed. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking about the signs of the day of judgment. He said, in those days, the worst liars will be considered the most truthful people. And people who are totally dishonest will be given the high positions and considered to be most honest people. This is how the situation would change. And believe me, in our childhood, when we used to read this hadith or listen to this hadith or this hadith, I always used to have a question. If a liar, he's a liar, then you know he's a liar. How can people take him as a truthful person? And subhanAllah, it didn't take too long for me to see it. Which means the understanding is totally changed. Everything is upside down. And the same thing is the understanding about honor and respect. What is honor? What is respect? A person, think about it. A person who spends his whole life just trying to earn a piece of bread. He has no concern in his life but to collect some dirt to collect some pieces of paper and to collect some pieces of wood 
and money. That's all he works for. House, painting the house, making it better looking. You know, here you know, there's a piece of wood that's coming out of there. Now I have to get that fixed. Better decoration, better design. There's another type of it that came out now. Metal, plastic, in the form of cars, toys, whatever we, our toys are. I mean, a person who just offers his whole life serving these things. And at the end leaves the world without getting anything for his akhira or without connecting himself to Allah, his creator, and even knowing his own wrongs. Sometimes in the churches, I ask the people, what is the purpose of you having your jacket? What is the purpose of having a jacket? And there is a purpose, you know, I had a jacket because of my, because of the season, because of the weather. Okay, how about a watch? How about dances? There is purpose, there is reason for having them. How about shoes? There is reason for having them. Now, when the main question comes, What's the purpose of your own existence in this world? And that is the time when the person is almost in coma. Doesn't know what's the purpose of his own existence. We can answer the questions about our shoes right away. But, when it comes to our, sh- our soul, the person has to pray for a minute. And may not have the right answer. Which simply means, I'm in this world only to make sure these shoes will remain clean. That's my purpose of the life. That these shoes will always remain clean. And anything happens to it, I get it polished. My, these clothes will always be nice looking. Because that's my honor. If clothes and shoes are good, then I'm good. If clothes and shoes are not good, then I'm bad. So I depend on shoes. I depend on these clothes. I depend on this metal and plastic. I depend on these cars. If the car looks good, then I'm good. If the car doesn't look good, then I'm not good either. Human beings value is according to these things now. What can be more dishonoring for human beings than to be earning his honor through these things, these are the things that are honored that human beings are using them. But now we feel honored that we can get these things to use them. Allah created these things to serve us. We became the slaves and servants of these things. The extreme of it is, you see people bowing down before stones. What is this? People who are doing the event of idols, what is that? Besides that this person is bowing down before stones and rocks. Some people will bow down before those rocks. Some people will bow down before pieces of papers. We may call them dollars. Yes, people are willing to do a big favor for it. We bow down for it. We sacrifice everything for it. We give up anything for it. Just to earn that bill. What is more dishonoring for human beings than being in that position where human beings became servants of all of these things? Are we living a life of a free man? Free person? If we look deep into our heart, it may not be the case. We are serving our cars, we are serving our furniture, we are serving our homes, we are became the servants of these things. Those things were meant to serve us so that they provide us what we need with. But we became the servants of these things now. Really, the life is just around these things. What could be more dishonoring for human beings than this? Now, let's send it even better. When we see the positions where children, young people, they are very, very proud to show everyone, look how the tire of my car shines. The tire of his car shines and 
the next thing is even more important to hear now, that he is proud to tell you that I cleaned it myself. The car was that he takes anywhere and everywhere. Very proud. I cleaned the tire of my soul. But if there is dirt on his father's foot, he will not touch it. He is not going to touch that. He will be ashamed to touch his father's foot to clean the dirt from the foot of his father or mother. But he is proud to clean the dirt from his tire. We are talking about honor. What could be more humiliating for a human being than to be honoring the tire of his car and dishonoring his own pants? No value of the pants. Shining the car for hours and all pants are in the old age home. They are crying for someone to come and help them. And we say honor just because how he dresses or because how much he has in his account that we think he may have? What is honor? The breed has changed, the understanding of it has changed. Go even a step further now to see people. They are proud and very happily clean all the dirt of their dogs. But all sons, if they have saliva dripping of their mouth, they will not touch it. They will not clean it. It's dirty. It's gross. I can't touch it. I have a nurse to do it. Call the nurse quickly. Call someone to do it. I can't touch that. But the very same person may be cleaning the, the dirt of his own dog. Are we going up or down? We can see now. We thought that it was honor, mashallah. Very nice suit, pretty suit. We were, the tie was wearing and it looked like it's uh, silk. Carrying the dog. Where are the parents and all the children? Where is the understanding of honor and respect? This is why the misunderstanding comes. We don't pay attention to the positions that the human beings are in nowadays. If these things were mentioned hundred years ago, I think there was the person who would just mention it, who would talk about it, you will be out of the world, people will just kill him. But now, no. It's part of our modern, very well educated, advanced society to do all of these things. It's dishonor for a woman to work at home. If there are two women standing, and mainly the question will be to the sisters, and of course for us two, two women are standing, and we go and introduce ourselves to them, and now we ask them, what do you do? I'm a housewife, I just stay home and take care of my children. What do you do? I'm an air hostess. So now, which is better of the two? MashaAllah, look, this one, she is uneducated. She just stays home. She doesn't do nothing for a living. She's very backward. MashaAllah, look at this one, very well educated. So the one that serves hundreds of people to give everyone a smile, she is very good. And the one who serves three, four people at home, she is backward. Serving every other man in the world, to act is a sign of being very well educated and being the grandest and the, this is honor that look, she does that work, she's in the restroom. That she serves food to hundreds of people every day. Home, serving people food to poor people, oh you're backward. Why do you just have to serve food to your why can't they do it themselves? So why can't they do it themselves when they come to the restroom? It's only the life is around money. Bowing down, we just said it, bowing down before this bill. Before that, the people in the old days, they used to worship idols, at least there is a rock there, now it's only a piece of paper. 
and everyone bowed down before that. Give up the children for that reason. Serving children is dishonor and serving that, those working over there, and serving every person in the world to get that. It's not. Subhanallah, look at the understanding. How down he has gone. And maybe even worse than this, and wallahu alam, which one is worse than other? When you see people selling the honor and dignity and respect of their own daughters, their own sisters, their mothers, to make some money out. When store owners, they will make sure that they will look for pretty girls to stand at the cashier to bring more people over there, to attract more people. Getting what out of that? Make money out of other daughters. Making money out of other sisters and other mothers. When all of these bulls and uh, uh, all the uh, advertisements and everywhere that we see, what is all of this? Selling what? This is, this is what's happening. And then the question comes, honor may be there. Now we see that it was a wrong understanding of what is honor, what is respect. Now when I look at Umm al-Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, I say, MashaAllah, what an honor. When I look at Umm Salama radiallahu anha, when I look at the, it comes to looking at daughters, I look at Fatima radiallahu anha, SubhanAllah, what an honor. What a respect. What a life. That is honor. Yes, if the understanding will change, then a person is looking totally at their own direction. These are the things that we need to realize and understand that many times when the question comes, it looks like, look, there is honor there, oh, very honorable person, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person remembers the rule, when a person turns away from Allah, Allah makes that person bow down before every object in the world. And the extreme of it is what we see in the form of people worshipping idols. The person turned away from worshipping Allah, Allah made that person bow down before rocks, before stones. He goes down and he just puts his head down. This is a person who may be millionaire, who may be very knowledgeable, he may be a great politician, very intelligent, but at the end of the day, he goes and he bows down before those objects. And we know a person, Muradi Desai, who very proudly used to say that I enjoy drinking the urine of the cow. And his own. His own urine. And his own. And his own too. And this is where you see when, when a person goes away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how the people are dishonored. So, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ Honor is only in deen. Ulama scholars are always mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attached honor with ta'a, with obedience. And this honor he has attached it with disobedience. Honor is with ta'a, with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience will someday get you the honor and respect. Disobedience someday will show the result and the person will be dishonored. And let's end with this dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he taught us, and sometimes he used to recite it in salah. إِنَّهُ لَا يُعِزُّ مَنْ عَادَيْتِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَذِلُّ مَنْ مَوَالَيْتِ وَلَا يَعِزُّ مَنْ عَادَيْتِ A person who you choose to be your friend, Wali, that your person can never be dishonored. And a person who you don't, who doesn't have connection with you, that person can never earn honor. He can never earn respect. And now we can, from the right understanding of what is honor, what is respect, we can see that it will come only when we connect our souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially it will be seen in Akhirah. In Akhirah is the real place 
where the result of the deeds will be seen for those who have connected themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will see the honor and the respect such an honor and respect subhanAllah in this world if a person even if a person gets to the highest position may not even get close to that just a simple example Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith on the day of judgment as people are walking towards the place where they are supposed to be assembled for judgment they will see some people sitting on beautiful thrones and uh, beautiful looking people, handsome people and shining. There is a lot of new shining. So everyone will be asking each other, who are these? Are these Anbiya Ali Mustalaq Wassalam? Finally, even Anbiya Ali Mustalaq Wassalam will look there and she will ask, who are these? The Anbiya are here. So who are those people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying and they will get the response from the angel that those are the parents of the Kuffar, those who memorize Quran al Kareem, they are the parents Allah is honoring to them today by putting them in that position. Honor and respect. It's only in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a lot of honor and respect and give the whole Ummah of Islam a lot of honor and respect in this world and after all, I'll put a call in my life and I'll put a call in my life and I'll put a call in What is the ajr for those four rakahs of Nasr after Salat al-Witr? There are different type of ahadith, but mainly the gist of it, it looks like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who will have the habit of those, of doing those four rakahs, the doors of the Jahannam will close for that person, which means protection against sins and disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is that we see that there are many people in the past especially who used to spend nights in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spending their days also in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how is it possible, how can a person manage to do something like this uh, what's the secret behind it? We normally use the term we have a lot of use of it but the concept is gone and that is barakah what is barakah? basically this is what barakah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he puts barakah in something then there is so much outcome of that the use, the thing is the thing but the outcome, the result of it is so much that is unbelievable for us something that is totally out of our control we have no control over it so barakah, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people barakah in their time so in a short time they can do a lot of things this is barakah in the time. Sometime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people barakah in their wealth. So, with a little wealth, they achieve so much that people with a lot cannot see. Sometime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people barakah in their health. So, with their health, they can do so much that normally people cannot achieve that much with that type of health. So, when a person uses something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in that. So initially, if we start with our calculations, they may not work really. But at the end, the results are that you start with it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in it and you just see up on it. How? It's only, this is what barakah means, that we don't know how. And I think I mentioned this earlier some time before too. When we were in Medina of Noah, we used to have a lot of guests here. If a person lived there over there, you know the situation that uh, always, mashallah, you have guests, and there are sometimes people that will come and stay with you for a month, as long as they want to stay in Medina. And we used to buy a bag of rice. 50 pounds bag of rice once a year now when we came over here you know we never realized anything 
It was something normal, okay? You know, once a year, you know, you buy the bag and you put it there and you just keep on taking it out of it and prepare the meat. He came over here, buy a bag, after some time, you went, I don't know, one, period, one, what happened? And now we are asking, what are you people doing with it? You don't know. That's the part. Where was it coming from? We don't know. Can we have it? Can we do that? No, we can't. It's the bark of the place. So, that is why. And this baraka is the real answer for how they were able to achieve so much. How to get it? Showing our effort, willingness, sincerity brings a lot of fun. Saying that we love before scanning the meal is it wajib? No, of course it's not wajib. It's sunnah and it's encouraged and there is a lot of reward for it. Right. There is a question that there is a hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِجْعَلُوا آخِرَ صَلَاتِكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ مِتْرَةً Make your last wither of the night Salat al -wither. And now if you're saying do some rakahs after Salat al -wither, how does that fit with this hadith? This is encouraged that would there be the last prayer of the night and that is of course in the position when a person knows for sure that he will be waking up for Salat al -wither, and then he would perform Salat al -wither after that. So if a person knows for sure that we will, I will wake up for Salat al-Salat uh, al then it is best to keep water for the, as a last prayer. But, for too many of the Sahaba Rizwan Allah, Ha'ala Ibn Ma'in, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged them, that do water before you go to sleep, and if you wake up, then do some Salat uh, al-Salat al So, it's encouraged, but it's not a fault or magic order. So, uh, both of them are allowed, if a person has a choice, Say for example, the month of Ramadan is taken in our position is because that will be the only time that a person is planning to stay up for the whole night. When is the best time to do Salat al -Wither? At the end of the night. Because you know for sure that you will be doing Salat al -Wither. You can do it at the end. How long it should be between Salat al -Wither and Fajr? There is no time limit, but of course Salat al has to be before the beginning time of Salat al -Fajr. We must do Salat al before the beginning time of Salat al -Fajr.
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always liked for Salat al-Isha to be performed late. And he liked to delay up to one third of the night. This is what he liked. But he didn't do it with the exception of about, I think, three times in his life. Other than that, he normally would do it early. He liked to do that because he used to tell the people to make a schedule, and that is, do whatever you need to do before Isha. After Isha, no more talking, that's it. Just go to sleep after Salat and Isha. So, this is how he used to, he was getting that community to set themselves and set their schedules. And therefore, he liked for Salat and Isha to be late and nothing to be done after Salat and Isha. But, because of the situation of the people that, for some people, they have to sleep early, some people are tired, they can't just then wait for too long, they may miss the jama'ah. For that reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, most of the time, he did it, most of the time in his life, he did it early, uh, at the beginning time. And this tells us that if there is a time that is allowable and is better for people, then that may be a better time for holding the mass.